How's it going everybody? Matt D back with another video. At my day job, I always get a lot of questions from people who are looking to switch wireless services, but they want to take their existing phones with them. While it is possible in most cases, in order to do so, you have to have a good understanding of the various cellular technologies that are out there. And in this video, I'm going to go over several different wireless technologies, and I'm going to focus on three in particular, GSM, CDMA, and LTE. The first cellular technology I'm going to go over is GSM, often referred to as Global System for Mobile Communications. Along with most mobile operators throughout the world, there are two wireless carriers in the U.S. that use GSM as a backbone, AT&T and T-Mobile U.S. On a GSM network, a user's phone number and their voice, text, and data plans are programmed into a small chip called a SIM card, or Subscriber Identity Module. Since your wireless service is only tied to a SIM card with GSM, you can easily move your service to a new phone optimized for the same cellular service just by inserting your SIM card into a new device. This is helpful if you break your existing device or if you want to travel internationally with an unlocked phone. I'll talk about unlocked phones in another video. The second technology I want to talk about is called CDMA, or Code Division Multiple Access. CDMA was created by Qualcomm, the same company that makes CPUs for an overwhelming majority of Android and Windows phones sold in the United States. Now, for those of you here in the U.S., Verizon Wireless and Sprint are the two carriers that run off of CDMA as a backbone. Now, the key thing that makes CDMA different from GSM is that CDMA does not involve the use of SIM cards. Instead, CDMA carriers like Verizon or Sprint each carrier will have a list of codes called ESNs, or electronic serial numbers. This list identifies particular handsets that can be used on a given CDMA network. Now, if your phone does not have a code that is listed on a given carrier's network, you simply cannot use that device on a carrier like Verizon or Sprint. So overall, instead of embedding your subscriber information onto a SIM card, with a CDMA-based carrier, your, your voice plan, your texting plan, your data plan, it's all embedded in the actual phone itself. Now let's talk about the strengths and weaknesses of GSM and CDMA. Now, as I mentioned earlier, GSM allows you to move your service from one device to another through the simple use of a SIM card. In addition to that, GSM devices can also transmit voice calls and use data at the same time, whereas 3G CDMA devices cannot. Now let's say you have an old GSM device lying around that hasn't had service in a while and you want to reactivate it. An important thing to note about GSM devices is if a SIM card goes for a certain period of time without service, it's usually 14 or 30 days here in the US. If a SIM card goes for too long without any cellular service at all, number one, you'll lose the phone number that was associated with that SIM card. And number two, the SIM card itself will actually expire. To reactivate a CDMA device, all you have to do is dial a simple code into the dialer. It's usually star 228 or star 22890. Lastly, the main disadvantage of CDMA in comparison to the GSM is that CDMA devices cannot easily be transferred from one mobile operator to another. Some of you watching this video are probably using a phone on Verizon or Sprint and you notice that your phone does have a SIM card. That's most likely because you're using an LTE-enabled 4G device. All four of the national U.S. wireless carriers have been expanding their LTE, or long-term evolution, networks for the past few years. The reason why you hear the carriers talk about LTE so much is that LTE is the fastest cellular data connectivity that's available right now. If you're on one of these two carriers and your phone disconnects from the LTE network, your phone will then use CDMA as a fallback. Now, over the past several years, most smartphones have had both a voice connection and a data connection built in. More recently, you may have heard of something called Voice over LTE. Basically, what Voice over LTE is, instead of having both a voice connection and a data connection to the network, your phone will process both data and phone calls over the same connection. This benefits CDMA LTE-based customers in the sense that those folks can now talk to other people and use data all at the same time. Between 3G and 4G, GSM carriers like AT&T and T-Mobile use a technology called HSPA, or High Speed Packet Access. Think of it as sort of a 3.5G. In terms of speed, AT&T's HSPA offers theoretical speeds as high as 21 megabits per second, 
whereas T-Mobile's HSPA Plus offers theoretical speeds as high as 42 megabits per second, as T-Mobile's dual carrier technology allows your T-Mobile device to communicate with two towers at the same time. Sometimes, if you're in a place with limited service or if your carrier is throttling your data speeds, you might see an E next to your signal bars if you have a GSM device. The E stands for a form of 2G known as Edge. Now, the 2G standard brought us the ability to access the internet over cellular as well as the first modern smartphones like the Blackberries and the original iPhone. In terms of speed, 2G is often equated with dial-up internet. For those of you who have a CDMA device, you might see a form of 2G called 1X displayed on your device. Overall, GSM and LTE are the most common forms of cellular connectivity in use today, along with CDMA in the U.S. and a handful of other countries. I hope you found this information that I presented in the video helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments down below, and also, if you like this video, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. So, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.